Welcome to our show, The China Briefing. Today, we delve into some significant developments that are shaping the global landscape. First up, Jeremy Orlair, the CEO of Circle, has shared his vision for the future of stablecoins, highlighting their growing importance in trade settlements in Hong Kong during Fintech Week 2024. With partnerships being forged for blockchain solutions, Orlair believes these digital currencies will revolutionize trade flows, especially in emerging markets. In another exciting update, China has successfully launched its Shenzhou 19 spacecraft, marking a milestone as it carries the country's third female astronaut, Wang Hauser, to the Tiangong space station. This mission will see the crew conducting 86 experiments and performing spacewalks over a six-month period, showcasing China's advancements in space exploration and technology. Lastly, we must address the tragic news from Gaza, where an Israeli airstrike has resulted in the loss of at least 93 lives. This incident has drawn international attention and condemnation, highlighting the dire humanitarian situation in the region as rescuers continue to search for the missing. Please stay tuned for more detailed coverage on these important stories. South China Morning Post reports that Circle CEO Jeremy Orlair has highlighted Hong Kong's growing significance in trade settlements, particularly with the increasing adoption of stablecoins. During an interview at Hong Kong Fintech Week 2024, Orlair pointed out that many importers from Asia prefer using stablecoins for their transactions due to their efficiency and cost effectiveness. Circle recently announced partnerships with Hong Kong Telecom and Tunes to explore blockchain solutions and facilitate cross border transactions in USDC. Orlair expressed optimism about the future of stablecoins and CBDCs in Hong Kong's Web3 development, while also emphasizing Circle's commitment to adhering to global regulatory standards. In a remarkable achievement for China's space program, the Shenzhou 19 spacecraft successfully launched with a three person crew including the nation's third female astronaut, Wang Hauser. The mission, which departed from the Jochuan Satellite Launch Center, is set to last six months at the Tiangong Space Station. Wang, a spaceflight engineer with a background in nuclear-powered rocket technology, will oversee various experiments and operations during the mission. Alongside her are fellow astronauts CAI Xuzha and Song Lingdong, both of whom bring military experience to the crew. This mission marks another milestone in China's expanding space capabilities, as the Tiangong space station continues to evolve. Yahoo US reports on the devastating impact of an Israeli airstrike in Beit Lahia, Gaza, which has resulted in at least 93 casualties. The attack targeted a residential building, drawing attention to the dire humanitarian crisis in the region. The Israeli military acknowledged reports of civilian harm while conducting operations aimed at dismantling Hamas's capabilities. Local hospitals are overwhelmed with injured civilians, struggling with shortages of medical supplies and staff. Amidst the escalating violence, the UN human rights chief condemned the situation, stressing that the Israeli military's actions are endangering an entire population. The ongoing conflict has resulted in significant loss of life, with over 42,924 fatalities reported in Gaza since the outbreak of hostilities. South China Morning Post The ongoing competition between the United States and China for solar energy dominance is intensifying, especially in light of the upcoming presidential election. The US has introduced significant subsidies through the Inflation Reduction Act, IRA, to bolster its solar manufacturing capabilities, aiming to reduce dependency on Chinese supply chains. However, uncertainty looms as Republican candidate Donald Trump has indicated intentions to rescind IRA funds if elected. Despite this, analysts suggest that both candidates may retain existing incentives. China's photovoltaic industry, having benefited from over two decades of robust government support, is now grappling with fears of overcapacity and declining growth potential. The US solar sector, still in its developmental phase, is banking on consistent funding and technological advancements to establish a competitive edge, although experts warn that overcoming China's entrenched manufacturing prowess will be a formidable challenge. The Globe and Mail, the legacy of Canadian-born filmmaker Alvin Rakoff is celebrated following his recent passing at the age of 97. Rakoff, who made a name for himself in British television, took a gamble on an unknown Sean Connery for the lead role in Requiem for a Heavyweight, 
a decision that ultimately launched Connery's illustrious career. Over his extensive career, Rakoff directed numerous productions, including two Emmy-winning works, and collaborated with some of the UK's most esteemed actors. His journey began in Toronto's Kensington Market, where he grew up in a struggling family. His passion for theatre was ignited by a Broadway performance of a streetcar named Desire, leading him to the UK, where he became a pivotal figure in the television industry. Rakoff's influence extended beyond directing, as he also penned novels and screenplays, leaving behind a rich legacy that shaped the landscape of British film and television. Australian Broadcasting Corporation, Western Australia is currently highlighted as the nation's strongest economy, yet the benefits of this economic success are not being felt universally among its residents. The recent Comsec State of the States report showcases WA's top performance in retail spending, unemployment, and population growth, with Premier Roger Cook celebrating the state's economic resurgence. However, experts caution that the rising population and consumer prices do not necessarily translate into increased real incomes for everyday Western Australians. While the resources sector has contributed significantly to job growth, social service organisations report alarming levels of financial hardship, particularly among vulnerable groups like single parents and low-income families. The Premier acknowledges the need for targeted support to ensure that the economic prosperity reaches those struggling to make ends meet, highlighting a pressing need for government intervention to address the widening gap in wealth distribution. Australian Broadcasting Corporation reports that when children fall ill with colds or flu, parents often seek ways to ensure their little ones get a restful night's sleep, with humidifiers frequently marketed as a solution. These devices, which introduce moisture into the air, can vary in type, such as cool mist and warm mist models. However, experts like Professor Brian Oliver and Dr. Pamela Douglas highlight that there is no solid clinical evidence supporting the claim that humidifiers significantly alleviate cold or flu symptoms or improve sleep in babies and toddlers. Instead, they caution that excessive humidity can lead to mold and dust mite proliferation, which can exacerbate respiratory issues. Parents are advised to consult healthcare providers before using these devices, as managing the environment for better sleep should focus on broader factors rather than humidity levels alone. The South China Morning Post reveals that Mexico's President Claudia Sheinbaum is contemplating the introduction of tariffs on small imported goods from China, particularly those purchased through e-commerce platforms like Timu and Shine. This move aims to generate additional revenue to address a significant budget deficit that has reached 5.9% of the GDP, the highest in over three decades. The proposed tariffs are seen as a means to protect domestic industries and jobs, especially in the textile sector, which has reportedly lost over 20,000 jobs due to competition from Chinese imports. The finance secretary, Rogilio Ramirez de la O, is tasked with exploring these economic measures while ensuring social programs remain intact. If implemented, these tariffs would be included in the 2025 economic package that must be submitted to Congress for approval by mid-November, potentially reshaping Mexico's trade relationship with China and addressing concerns over unfair competition and regulatory compliance. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO brief via email. Got a question in your mind We'll find the answer, we'll be kind Encyclopedia on everything Laugh and learn with the zing, zing, zing From ends to outer space We've got the facts in one great place for kids and grown-ups too, we've got the A to Z.
for you Kids and grown-ups too 